Friday morning, everyone. I'm Octavia Mitchell. We're continuing our breaking weather alert. Heavy rain on the horizon. We're expecting severe flooding. We have team coverage for you this morning. Meteorologist Kyle Dennis is keeping an eye on the roadways. But first, let's go to meteorologist Josh Marthers with a look at the rest of the day. And Josh, what can we expect? All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, here's what we have. The, uh, we're seeing that moisture plume that we've been waiting to see form. It's here, and you can see it stretches all the way down into the tropics. We have some light rain that has been moving on shore occasionally. Even the radar isn't detecting a lot of the light rain that's falling out there right now. The radar is kind of overshooting some of that, but you can see it's starting to fill in again here along the coast. But it's later today where we expect that moisture surge to return and the rain rates to ramp up. Here we are right now. This looks similar to the radar that's out there now. As we go through the day, you can see the Heavier rain starting to spread back in. I think this may be a tad aggressive a little early. Maybe delay this by an hour or two. And as we go through the evening hours really is when I think this starts to ramp up. And look at the thunderstorms that appear to be developing off our coast too. Those would be moving in overnight and it looks like we're going to get pummeled during the day tomorrow uh, by a potentially significant threat of very heavy rain. And this is our high resolution forecast models idea of where the heaviest rain placement will be. And we now have two to three model runs in a row that is beginning to settle on where the axis of heavy rain is going to set up. And it looks like it's going to happen from the golden corner of South Carolina. Follow this pink and this first line of pink right there that seven inches plus according to the model you see that going all the way down into the Charleston Metro and up and down the South Carolina coast. Now remember any slight shift by 20 or 30 miles in this will have big time impacts on what you see in your backyard. But confidence is now growing that our six to 12 inch widespread total is going to verify. With 12 to 15 inches now in some areas becoming increasingly likely, um, we will be most likely adjusting this forecast and, and there has been discussion that this will be raised. Uh, we just spoke with Chief Meteorologist Rob Fowler, all the Storm Team 2 has been talking, to this, talking about this through the morning and, and we are most likely going to elevate this forecast through the afternoon, uh, but for now 6 to 12 just about in every backyard is what we're looking at through Sunday. Now Kyle Dennis is over with us right now. He's going to talk more about the impacts, the specific impacts of this event, because it's not just focusing on rain. Even though rain is the big deal here, we have other things like coastal flooding, beach erosion, and we're even concerned now that we may be dealing with multiple hazards while we're talking about the flooding in the form of severe weather, which could be isolated tornadoes. Let's head over to Kyle now, and he's going to talk a little bit more about that as that sets up this weekend. Oh, that's right, Josh, and in terms of the cold of flooding. We're seeing some of that right now, and it's not because of the rain, it's because of the high tide. We've been seeing that since the supermoon, but today's high tide we're seeing elevated because of Joaquin offshore, but it's sending a big swell towards our coast, and that is creating yet again another round of elevated high tide. So let's show you the impacts we're expecting here. Obviously, the big one is the flooding. We have that in the extreme category, something we have not yet used. Now, as far as high wind goes, that is a low risk. Of course, we could see gusty winds if we do see some thunderstorms, and the best chance to see any severe storms or at least some strong storms would be late tonight into the day tomorrow. But you know, there's been some talk out there about how we're seeing this heavy rain along the East Coast because of Joaquin, and that is really just not true. Joaquin is not going to directly impact us, and that's why the high wind risk overall is in the low category. The tornado risk is low, but again, we will be concerned about the potential for some stronger storms, maybe even some severe storms uh, tonight into the day tomorrow, and it is possible. It's We're still not extremely confident about this, but th it is possible we could see an environment conducive to tornadoes. That will be something we have to watch closely. Coastal flooding high risk of that again we're seeing that right now just with high tide even without a lot of rain around if we get an, another round of heavy rain that coincides with the next high tide we could be seeing some much bigger problems there with the coastal flooding high surf beach erosion that's because we're seeing the elevated uh, tides because of Joaquin Combine that with the very heavy rain when we've got some even bigger problems. Now, right now, we are seeing some minor flooding, and that is closing some roads downtown. This is saltwater flooding due to that high tide. So right now, here are some of the current road closures in downtown Charleston. Wentworth at Barry Street is closed. Colonial between Trad and Broad. Ashley between Broad and Trad. 
Ashley from Bennett to Calhoun, and in North Charleston, Meeting Street at Spruill Avenue is also closed. That's been closed since this morning. Um, so we do have some new closures now that are taking place with the Coastal Flood Advisory through 2 o'clock. Fortunately, we are getting a little bit of a lull in the rain. If we were seeing the heavy rain right now, we'd have a big mess on our hands, and unfortunately, it looks like that could be the case when we head into our next high tide uh, later tonight. We'll talk more about that coming up a little bit later. Octavia? All right, thank you, Kyle. Now, as Kyle mentioned, we're expecting flooding in downtown Charleston as the tide comes in. News 2's Ashley Yo has been in downtown Charleston all morning for us, and she joins us down live. Ashley, what's the condition there right now? Hey Octavia, it's it's a little sprinkly. It's definitely overcast and chilly, but the rain is is held off where we are right now, but we are on the corner of Wentworth and Lockwood. Wentworth is one of these streets that is partially blocked off. I want you to take a look down this way, down Wentworth. So as you can see, not too deep, even on the place where it crosses the road entirely, you can still see the yellow line that goes through. I still would not recommend coming down these streets because they do have the blockades up. But I spoke to a man earlier who has lived in the Charleston area downtown for 61 years, and I asked him what he does to prepare for an event like this coming our way. What do I do? Uh, nothing. It just, well, you clean up the first floor. You clean, everything's out of the first floor and up to the second floor. And if it gets up to the second floor, then we're all in trouble. We're not the only place expecting this kind of weather. The storms are moving in and getting some national attention as well. Earlier today, we talked to the Weather Channel's meteorologist Jim Cantori, and he has some similar advice to what we've been sharing with you about the roads. Avoid, if it's raining heavy out, two hours before and after high tide, just avoid roads. You know, that's the best advice I can give you. And if you woke up this morning and wondered, you know, why is everything closed? As you can see, the cars driving behind me, um, it's because it is expected to come a little bit later, you know, with the high tides. As Kyle said, if the water was coming down right now, we might have a different situation. So Octavia has some more of those closures for you. I'm live in downtown Charleston, Ashley Yost, News 2. All right, thank you, Ashley. And there are many closures around the low country today. As many of you already know, Charleston County, Dorchester District 2 and 4, Berkeley County and Colleton County School Districts have canceled classes and all activities today. Georgetown is still in session today, but all after school activities, including football, has been canceled. All Charleston County facilities are also shut down today. That includes all government offices and libraries, plus the South Carolina area. For a full list of closings around the low country, head to our website, countonto.com. And we have News 2's Macy McLeod. She is live for us this morning. There's a threat of beach erosion along our coast, but there's also quite a bit of surfers in the water this morning. News 2 joins us live. Macy McLeod joins us now live from Wally Beach. Macy? Hey Octavia, that's right. I'm out here at the washout on Folly Beach and surfers are definitely enjoying this weather. Just look over here at how many people are out here surfing today at Folly Beach. People are definitely enjoying having classes canceled, being out of school and a lot of work being canceled day too as well as for the flooding. So we have all these surfers out here. I'm joined now by one of these surfers, Gretchen Tate. Now tell me What's so great about this weather and why is everyone out here surfing? Well, the weather's not so great, but the waves are perfect. It's, you can definitely see that hurricane swell coming in, nice, clean, glassy, big sets. And this is pretty typical for the washout when we've got hurricane swell. So it's pretty typical to see this many people out here. Yes, definitely. And anytime there's really good waves, but this is a good little hurricane swell we've got. And you can see all the action right here. It's fun just to come watch if you don't surf. And now you, you look a little cold. I'm freezing. I cannot get warm, but the water is actually still pretty warm. It's just the air, and there's this pretty strong, probably 20 mile per hour breeze out here that's just keeping me chilled. But now you also told me that you are a marine science teacher at a local <laughs> school. So is this something that you've been talking to your students about this week? Yes. Well, we actually do a whole year hurricane unit, and we talk about how it can impact waves around here. And you're seeing a lot of the effects of a hurricane. You're seeing, you know, high coastal erosion. It looks like there's one turtle's nest down left down on the beach. So who knows what will happen to that? But the tide's about to be high. It's coming up. Waves, currents, and you. I think the increased um, tidal erosion you're going to see from a result from this. You feeling those rip currents out there? Yeah, the currents aren't as strong as I thought they'd be, knowing how big the swell is. But there's a nice, steady little current moving us down the beach. 
Perfect. Thank you so much, Gretchen. Thank you.